cell phone. We'll begin with questions for Coach Favors. Yes, questions. Please raise your hand. Nico. Hey, you're the coach. Hey, Nico. Hey, in your coaching career, can you think of a stretch you encountered where you had to play the likes of Clemson, Miami, Florida State, all in consecutive games anyway? Never. You know, it's uh, it's been it's been fun though. I mean, even breaking down the coaches are such fantastic coaches. So when you're looking at the schemes offensively and defensively and the breakdowns, you're going, you know, wow, that's a heck of an ideal. Boom, boom, boom. You see the adjustments going on. You see the chess match going on during the game. That's really exciting. But then when you look at the athletes, you know, you go back to, um, you know, NC State's defensive end. I believe it was Chubb, 42 for Clemson. I can't think of his name. You guys will know his name. Outstanding player. And then. You roll right into uh, the guys that Florida State's got, 99, 9. They got, the defensive linemen are unbelievable. And uh, you know this from an offense, the young quarterback is uh, growing up, so to speak. But their defense is a championship defense. And uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, contest. They're uh, you know, a bunch of five stars with very good coaches. And then they know what they're doing. You go back and you look at their record, you want to say that because of their record, they're not very good. It's not true. If you look at the games that they lost, you give them 15 points and let them sprinkle it where they want, and I think they're a one-loss football team. You know, it's kind of similar to us. You give us three touchdowns, 21 points, you know, we could be an undefeated football team, but you can't go back and do that. So this team's a lot better than what the record indicates, and uh, they started off in the top three in the country, and they have those type of athletes. So it's a great question. Steve, um, the last two weeks, John, Well, I think that we're just trying to play the guys that are hot right now. A lot of that stuff goes into formations. Okay, there's certain formations and certain personnel groups that are better for Jonathan, and there's certain formations and personnel groups that are better than Valdez. And as offensive teams try to attack us different way, then we'll use different personnel. I don't even talk about stuff like that during the season. I think that uh, uh, J Mr. Wildhack has been unbelievable. I love him as a boss, and uh, he's a very honest guy, which is refreshing. But um, I don't talk that kind of stuff during the season. Our whole goal is based off of what's going to happen this Saturday, I'm trying to stay focused on being 1-0 this week. And is that you don't talk with us, or you don't even talk to him about that? I just don't talk about stuff like that. Thank you. Matt? Uh, you know, tight end usage this season. Matt, you, you, your voice is so deep. Give me, just give me the first part. I got, to, I got the last part, but give me the first part of what you said. Yeah, you know, the one thing that we wanted to do last year is we really wanted to be able to expand what we do with the tight end. In 2013, we had a tight end on our football team that ended up being a third team All-American. And we really do uh, enjoy having tight ends that can do a lot of things on our football team. We were a little limited when we first got here. Cam, Cam was, was special in a, in a lot of ways, but he lacked some of the physical things that we normally have with our tight ends, even though he's an outstanding guy. And I believe he's up for a special scholarship, road scholarship award that's only awarded to 20 people in the United States of America. And they take 12 out of 20 and he's up for it. So I hope Cammy gets it. But the our thing is we want guys that are really, we really look for NFL tight ends, kind of the Chris Gatneys and the guys that used to be here. And uh, we think that Ravion fits that bill. We think we've got some young guys in our program and we're still looking for other tight ends that are even bigger, more flexible, that can do more things than what we have here. And when it's all said and done, we should have NFL tight ends just like we have NFL running backs, d line and quarterbacks. And I guess more generally, That's where we're different. We love tight ends. If you look at what, what I really like to do, when we're really rocking and rolling, we're 11 and what we call 21 personnel. So that's uh, one tight end on the field, one tailback, or uh, two running backs on the field, one tight end. I don't like taking a tight end off the field. I, I would prefer to play the game with a tight end, but you can't always do that. It's like a basketball game, okay? You're going to love this analogy, Matt. Okay? You and I are on a basketball team, okay? 
everybody has a role. Your job is to get me the ball. It's not to shoot the three-pointer. It's to set picks for me so I can shoot the three, okay? It's, it's no different when you have a tight end. Sometimes, okay, that tight end's, that tight end's role is to put another guy on the field defensively that we can take advantage of. And if we put the tight end on the, on the field, are they going to put a – we just talked about this with Valdez and Thomas. Are they going to put a big linebacker to cover him or are they going to put a DB to cover him? And then based off of what they do, decides whether you want to run the ball or throw the ball based off your advantage. But your tight end has to be balanced. You don't want a tight end that can just block. And you don't want a tight end that can just catch. You want a tight end that can do both, and then you can start to take advantage of some people. The analogy fit? You're a better basketball player than me. You're looking at me. Okay, if you're better, you're better. I'll set, I'll set screens for you. You know, I, I, I think you said, what do we expect out of me? Well, I think he's doing a nice job of stepping up. I mean, obviously, he was hurt a little bit earlier. He didn't get the go, opportunity to go all the way through two days with us. One a day, excuse me, we don't do two days anymore. All the way through August with us. But the way he's came on on the back end, I think has been, he's been doing it really well. And I think he's been playing within himself. You know, uh, he's not putting himself in bad situations. He's had some 50-50 balls where he's, he's done OK. And I think because of how heady he is, He's playing uh, really, really well right now. So we're excited about how he's been playing. Brian? When you look at everything that's gone on in college football this year, so another, another year in college football, but you talked about the guys believing. When did that motivation set in for this football team to, hey, we can go out and beat anyone in the country? You know, I really thought it started last year. When we, um, when we lost that Pittsburgh game and the way we lost it, that was a very emotional time for, for the team and I. And uh, took all the coaches. I wouldn't let the coaches come in the locker room. I wanted to, after the game, I wanted to talk to the team. I spoke to the 2016 team. And then I asked all the seniors to leave because they were graduating. And then I spoke to the 2017 team. And that's still in that pit locker room. And I think that's where it all started. I think that's where we planted the seed and put some fertilizer down. And then coming back in spring ball, and the things we did in the summer, we needed to water it and put a lot of sun on it. And uh, we're, this is where we're at. I think we're a strong group. I think we're tightly wound. It doesn't mean that we're going to be successful in November. It doesn't mean we're going to be unsuccessful in November. But I think if we stay together, no matter what happens by the end of this month, I think we'll be better for it. And I think I have a team that will stay together. Closed off position. Hmm? Closed off position. Sorry. <laughs> it's been a, a lawnmower. <laughs> you know, do you kind of have a gauge on who you might get back? I think we're going to get Coleman back. You know, uh, uh, I think Coleman could have helped, could have played a little bit in Miami. I didn't want him to play out there at 60, 65 percent, and then based off of the wet, the wet grass and all that kind of stuff, it wouldn't have been good for him. There you go. You're right on it. So I, I do believe we'll get Coleman back. Uh, we'll have to see about Joshua. And then from there, we're going to have to see. You've already broke the thing on Cordy. Well, he's supposed to. I know. I said you broke it. It was good. It was accurate. And you were right. I mean, kudos. I mean, that was good. So, uh, you know, he won't be back until next year. And then uh, we'll have to see who else we can get or who we don't get back from that. But the main thing is there's a lot of aches and a lot of owies, too. Just guys' bodies aching and just being right, being exactly right. So go ahead. No, Jordan's going to – Jordan – I don't think Jordan's going to be able to be with us. I think he's going to pretty much be done. Not even specials? I don't think so. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got more questions. Chris, can you talk about that Pittsburgh uh, – after the Pittsburgh game and then talk to you about the team? What was the message for the guys coming back that you wanted them to leave that moment? Well, we need to be tighter. There was just still a, a – everybody wasn't on board. You know, you say you, – what you do speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you say. What you do speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you say. They were, they, were, they were saying the right things. They weren't doing the right things. And I think I have a team of guys that are doing the right things now. In the back, anyone here? Hey, you know, um, don't you, um, throughout this um, earlier part of your career, it's kind of seemed like underbelly, especially when he was going through recruiting process and everything. How do you think that's affected his leadership style now? 
I think the most, I think the most, uh, I don't to say the word dangerous, the most energizing thing in the world is someone who totally believes in themselves when other people don't believe around him. And I think that that chip on his shoulder, uh, the way he's gone through high school and the recruiting process, uh, having numerous coaches and offenses from high school to college, this being only the second, well, this being the first time that he's ever ran the same offense two years in a row in his football career, I think that that, that chip, that edge, is what makes him what he is. And I think it's a, a positive thing for him. It, it gets him going. And uh, obviously, you know, we've talked about it. We want him to be careful out there. But I think that style is what energizes him and gets him going. And I think it energizes our offense and energizes our football team as well. It's reckless. It's dangerous, and it's exciting. Time for two more questions. Nico and Fernando. Coach, this question actually comes from our newsroom tonight's active football, but a little bit. So, um, with the current moments that showing campus, what kind of precautions do you guys take as a team? You know, we've, we've taken shots. You know, the guys, it's not mandatory. If the guys want to take a shot, they take a shot. Our guys are going to do what they do. Some guys, you know, some families believe in immunization. I want to make sure I say the word. Some people, some families believe in it and some families don't. You know, it's America. They get the right to do what they want. We talk about how important this month is and we don't want anybody to not only get sick, but to have a guy get sick and then get the rest of the team sick and you have to shut the whole team down. And then you miss out on a, an opportunity in life that you may not ever get back again because you do or do not take a shot. We encourage them all to take the shot, but it's not mandatory. But with a lot of the guys, I try to stay blank. You know, it's a, it's a portrait, and they're going to paint it. I'm really not surprised. I'm really excited about how he's playing because he really is playing some fantastic football. And Scoop was playing fantastic on the other side as well. But when you get two guys, and with Dow's coming in, when you get two guys that were playing at such a high level, I mean, that's what's enabled us to do a lot of the things on defense that uh, – has allowed us to really slow down some really, really good offenses. And it's really changed our style of defense and, the, and the, the way people look at us defensively. The really cool thing is that those guys are coming back. And those guys have got a lot of years on those corners. And uh, we, we, you know, we're, next year we're going to have to replace the safeties and get, and get those linebackers redone. But uh, we've really got a foundation for a, a good defense that's going to be around here for a long, long time. You know, every job is to me. Every job's open every yeah. every year. So you have the, if you're a starter, you have the right to get better, or you have the right to get worse. And yeah. if you get worse, and someone gets better than you, then you've lost your starting job. Yeah. You have. I think it's important that it's always open. You always got to have that competition inside the family, and the best guy is going to play no matter what. And when you say that, that means a freshman can come in and play and start. A sophomore, he can start as a sophomore, and then as a junior, he can get beat out. So we got, hey, so-and-so started for two years, now he's not playing anymore. Well, we're going to play the best guy. So even though you're a starter, you have to continue to develop. You have to be as strong. We're only as strong as our weakest link. And those guys need to continue to get better, to keep making the offense better, the defense better, the special teams better, the families better. You know, How about that uh, Cole kid? He's kicking really well now, isn't he? Things can turn around really quick in a year. Thanks very much, Thank you, guys. Thank you.